Electric cars are lower maintenance than their internal combustion engine siblings. They have fewer things that can go wrong thanks to the fact that they have a handful of moving parts inside them as opposed to hundreds. And even today, with dirty fossil fueled sources of electricity still making up a portion of the world's electrical grid mix, they are responsible for fewer emissions during their lifetime than internal combustion engine cars. But while electric cars have improved by orders of magnitude in the last decade in terms of range, cost and longevity, their battery packs, usually in some form of lithium iron, are still very much their Achilles heel. Most modern electric car battery packs now outlive the car that they were put in at the factory. But the issues concerned with mining the raw materials used in lithium ion battery packs, as well as global supply and the overall cost of the same, mean that the hunt is most certainly on for replacement technologies to take over from lithium iron in our electric cars. So far, we've seen plenty of options suggested, from flow batteries through to cobalt free lithium ion cells, cells that make use of nanotubes and exotic cell chemistries. And over the weekend, my Twitter stream literally lit up when the BBC and several other UK outlets covered the story of former Royal Navy officer Trevor Jackson and a brand new battery he's just signed a contract to begin manufacturing of. The headlines said it all. Here was a British engineer who has built a new battery pack that will allegedly travel 1500 miles on a single charge. And with headlines like that, we of course had plenty of people reaching out and asking if we knew about it. And of course we do. And we also think there are some things you need to understand about this battery and its implications in the plug-in world before getting super excited. Because while this new battery is more energy dense than conventional electric car battery packs, you have to make some pretty big concessions to use these batteries. Before I get there though, let's just cover a few other important parts of the story. The rights to produce the battery have been acquired by Austin Electric, a UK based engineering firm which owns the rights to the Austin brand. Austin, for those who don't know, is the company that merged with Morris Motors in the 1950s to form the British Motor Corporation or BMC, a company which eventually became part of the Rover Group. And no, I'm not telling you this because it's pertinent to the story. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just a classic car nerd. Let's get back to the new battery. In most modern electric car batteries, there are two electrodes, one cathode and one anode, made of different materials. There's an electrolyte in between them. When discharging, there's a flow of ions from the anode through the electrolyte to the cathode. When you charge, those ions go the other way. But this new battery that's being heralded as a revolution does something slightly different. It uses aluminium or aluminum, depending on where you live, at the anode and then oxygen from the air we breathe at the cathode. It's called an aluminium air or aluminum air battery. This chemistry isn't new. Aluminium air batteries have been around for years and are well known as having a high energy density around eight to nine times what the current lithium ion cells can manage. As a reminder, energy density is literally a measurement of how much energy a battery can store per unit of mass, as opposed to power density, which is a measurement of how much instantaneous energy it can deliver per unit mass. So far, so good, right? I mean, aluminium is the third most common element in the Earth's crust and the first most abundant of metal in the same. It's soft and easy to work with. It's pretty darn stable, unlike that pesky lithium, which is super reactive and at, right at the other end of the periodic table. It's non-toxic and curiously, no living creature we know uses it for metabolism. There are some super major benefits to using this aluminium air battery over a lithium ion battery. It's far cheaper to make, it's far more stable, and it's got a far lower carbon footprint in terms of mining and refining. It's capable of storing a whole lot more energy and is far lighter than many batteries because aluminium is light and well, the other bit is air. So yeah, it's pretty good. And like I say, using air batteries isn't new. Hearing aid batteries traditionally use zinc air chemistry. Lithium air batteries exist as well, although mostly in a laboratory sense, at least for now. But there are some big disadvantages to aluminium air, and these are things that the coverage so far hasn't dealt with. First, aluminium air batteries have traditionally been pretty toxic. 
While the aluminium and the air is generally safe, the electrolyte between them has always been a little nasty and not so easy to dispose of. Then there's the fact that the aluminium in the aluminium air batteries actually gets slowly eroded by the air as it discharges, meaning that when it's empty, you have to get more aluminium. You can't just pop it in a recharging circuit and grow the metal back. Jackson says he solved the first problem and apparently drinks the electrolyte he's developed to prove the point that his new battery chemistry is absolutely safe. But the second part, well, that's still not been solved. What we have here is a fantastically energy dense battery that when it's discharged needs to be completely swapped out before you can carry on with your journey. Is that something you want? Well, that depends. Because these batteries are so energy dense, a battery pack one eighth the physical size of today's modern lithium ion battery packs would be needed for the same range per charge, or should that be per fill? And that means it's far easier to package that battery inside a car's chassis in a place that's really easy to reach and swap out. And actually come to think of it, because they are a lot lighter, you'd actually be able to go further per kilowatt hour of energy than you can in today's cars, making them more energy efficient. Naturally, I'm guessing battery swapping would be done by either professionals at a battery shop station, or perhaps even be automated and done with robots. But just like the aluminium air battery pioneered by Israeli firm Finergy, who have been working on this chemistry for years and years, you can, for now at least, say goodbye to the idea of filling up at home from electricity generated on your roof. Aluminium air batteries are amazing things, and I'd love to see them in electric vehicles. But rather than primary batteries, I'd love to see them used as range extenders, paired with current lithium ion cells to extend the range of customers' cars when they don't or can't stop en route. This way, everyone can benefit from the energy density of aluminium air without being beholden to having to visit a swap station every time their car needs a new battery pack. You could essentially have an aluminium air plug-in hybrid. With my cynical hat on, I'm imagining this chemistry would be very popular with current purveyors of dino juice, as it keeps people on the same kind of relationship between the car and the fuel. And as such, you can expect this aluminium air battery to get a lot of attention and investment in the coming months. It is, to put it bluntly, almost a fuel cell. But as for being able to gain complete energy independence from a battery that should last the lifetime of your car, act as a potential battery backup for your home, and allow you to have your own fuel that you generate on your roof and store in your vehicle, well, for now, that's essentially what we have in today's modern lithium ion cells. There is hope. Lithium air batteries do promise to offer rechargeability down the road, and many different chemists are currently working on that technology. Other types of air batteries are also being researched. But until someone comes up with an air battery where you don't have to replace the metal inside it to refuel, well, I think it's not going to gain a lot of traction. What do you think? That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Feed our coffee habit or make a donation towards our LA Auto Show coverage with Kofi or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, keep evolving.